Oh man, we got a little bit, little bit of a heat wave going on in Denver. It's like mid to upper 90s, so I know that's not crazy hot compared to Phoenix or Texas or Florida or other parts of the world, Africa. I don't know. There's hot places around the world, but for Denver, that's pretty hot. Yes, heat is going to be the keyword, and I'm going to test out my new singlet from Rabbit that I picked up yesterday. Uh, hopefully, that's going to become my racing singlet. We shall see. And then going back and forth between replacing electrolytes on my run today in the heat. I had to run in the middle of the day, so it's going to be hot out, uh, whether it's tailwind or you can. So I'll stay keep you posted on that. And the question of the day, kind of a tough one. Who has a tough story, a challenging story about suffering from heat in a running situation. I have one. I'm going to share it with you later in the vlog. It was, uh, it was actually in a race, and so I won't go into details now, but if you have uh, any experience or wisdom when it comes to heat training or heat racing, definitely let us know down in the comments because that's what today's vlog is all about, trying to deal with this summer heat. And oh my goodness, I'm just reflecting back to last week in, or 10 days ago in Chicago. I mean, I almost, I felt like I was about to die out there. Like I, there was one point on the run where I was like, huh, I might not make it back. And I, I cut the run short and everything because it was so hot and so humid. Anyway, okay, let's lace up. Let's get ready. All right, heat, keyword, come on now. New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel kind of day. Here we go, everyone. the heat embrace there it is all oh, there's the sun all right 10 miles in the mid 90s i gotta do yeah i gotta get the work in man but i do have a nice cold water bottle all right 10 miles here we go off under that hose just a little bit oh man I must say whenever I visit my family in upstate New York and we're gonna talk about this later in the studio as well but I oh my goodness like everyone out there has a pool and nobody in Denver has a pool but I mean, it just isn't a common thing here unfortunately like in their backyards not even raised pools very much so that is one thing about the East Coast that I do miss our pools because then after a run you just go jump in it's amazing so anyway I'm on my way to the gym now uh, sure enough the clouds did roll in right at the end of the run so that was nice I'll get you the stats on the run uh, once again back in the studio but uh, we are gonna jump in the pool at the rec center and then I'm gonna talk to you about the sauna and kind of what happened to me over the last three or four months by using the sauna all right Good solid heat day. Keyword heat. Oh man. Actually, not the question of the day. Second question of the day. How hot was it where you uh, lived today? Where you live right now, today on your run? How hot was it? That'd be cool to know. All right, here we go. And I'm back from the rec center, back from the pool and the sauna. And today was kind of a rough day, a tough day. Uh, you probably noticed that the live stream did not happen once again. Uh, I don't even think it was the internet this time. I think it was just technical issues with the software that I have to use. I need to hire, no joke, I need to hire like a 16 year old who is a gamer. I know you're out there that knows how to live stream. Like I'm 34. 
this is just beyond, like this is not my cup of tea. I love making videos, I love being creative. I'm not a technical person at all, so it was just a rough day. I lost, you know, a good three hours of the day trying to figure out the live streaming and it still did not work. So I'm trying to let it, let it go and I, I don't frankly know when we'll live stream again because it's just getting to be a little too much, if you know what I mean. Therefore, I went for a run and I went for a good run. I wanted to pick up the pace a little bit today in the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel, 13 miles, 21 kilometers. I actually don't even know yet because once again, another technical issue today. Strava is not syncing with my old Sun 2 watch right now, so it is what it is. But I believe I was right about 6.30 a mile or four minutes per kilometer for the run today in the Fuel Cell Rebel. I have a feeling we will get to 50 miles sooner rather than later in this shoe. And uh, okay, let's, and also if you can hear thunder in the background, I have the door open to the studio because it's really hot in here because it was a hot day. That's right in the mid nineties and that's what we're gonna talk about right now. So as we start to run, one way that our body naturally cools itself of course, is through sweat, uh, dilating. Basically, our blood vessels near, like near our skin, begin to dilate more, and that helps with cooling. Also, our blood flows closer to the skin uh, when the temperatures are hot out, like today, and that also helps with cooling. Um, but one issue is that as you pick up the pace on a hot day, obviously, like we are already asking our heart to do a lot of cardiac work, uh, working on that cardiac efficiency, meaning we're trying to pump as much blood to our muscles as possible. But when the temperatures get too high and we're pumping a lot of blood to our muscles because we're doing a workout, uh, like to, well, today was a tempo day for me. It wasn't a workout, but it was a solid day. And so therefore, my, it wasn't an easy day. My muscles were working a little harder than usual. And therefore, um, uh, what can happen is we can uh, become nauseous, dizzy, uh, and even if it gets really serious, turn into heat stroke uh, because basically our cardiac efficiency can't pump enough blood throughout our body uh, because that blood is being used to cool off our bodies uh, because the temperatures are outside are so hot. Now, how do we adapt to the heat? And this is where the sauna comes in and my foot injury back in March. I would go swim for, you know, 30 minutes to an hour and then it was March, so it was still kind of cold out and it just felt so good to go into the sauna for 10 or 15 minutes just to warm the body up after being in the pool. And after doing that for, you know, six to eight weeks, it was amazing how much uh, adaptation I had to the heat in that sauna. And so the Western States 100, remember uh, I went out and filmed it in June, actually about a month ago in June and what those runners do and especially the, especially the elite runners to get ready to run a hundred miles. And this year was one of the coolest years in a long time, but it, those temperatures there in California in mid and mid to late June can get above a hundred degrees very easily and you're running 100 miles. So they really have to do heat training in order to perform well in those conditions and adapt their bodies. And so what they do is like, they'll fly out like a, a month before and basically go run through what they call the canyons in jackets and hats. And, and of course, you have to be so careful uh, you got to be so on the on the ball with hydration and nutrition and recovery afterward because you're putting your body through a lot of stress. But that is how a lot of these elite 100 mile racers get ready for the Western states is they, they just go run and train in the heat with jackets on and hats on and it looks insane. I look at their pictures on Instagram and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it, but maybe someday I will. So, um, and during the race, I don't know if I got pictures of it uh, real well, but first of all, they dump a lot of water on them on themselves. You can see this at the aid station. I think this was Robinson Flat. All these runners getting water poured on them to help cool off. But in addition, they have these hats that you can buy that basically you can pour like a bucket of ice into this hat and then you, you close it off. And then this, butt, this hat is holding ice on top of your head. Uh, I just think it's brilliant and I would love to, I'd love to try that sometime just to deal with some of these uh, hot temperatures in, the, uh, in running conditions. So again, keyword is heat and yes, I am not an expert 
as always, we're just trying to get a discussion going down in the comments, learn from each other, support each other, give each other ideas like that ice hat. I can't wait to buy one of those someday. Um, but, and I already asked the question of the day, and here's my quick story that's related to heat issues in my running. I walked onto the CU cross country team in the fall of 05. In the spring of 06, we were in the Big 12, the CU team, and the, the old Big 12 with Texas and Kansas and Nebraska and Baylor. And so the Big 12 track and field championships were in Waco, Texas that year. And I was signed up for the 10K. Coach put me in and we were in it to win the meet. And so we were trying to get as many points as possible. And I was a walk on, so I was not on a scholarship. But if you score points in a conference championship, that is how you can earn your way into a scholarship. At least that's how it was when I was in school. And uh, so I hopped in the 10K with Brent Vaughn and uh, Chris Pannone, Bradley Harkrader, a bunch of guys, like basically the Kenyon Newman, I do believe. And we all went, we all went out and we went out strong. And the race was at eight or 9 PM. And we thought we were tough stuff coming from elevation down to almost sea level, not quite. And it was a, I think it was a 9 PM race for the 10K. And we got to about lap 20. So about a mile and a half to go in a 10K. And we all, well, not all of us, but we started doing the skeleton dance. You know, when you start going down the track, uh, like you see it at the end of cross country races where you're just like wobbling and you're falling over. Like we, we went out hard, but I think what we underestimated was the humidity levels. It just zapped our energy. And I was in, I went from like 12th I remember I moved, I moved up to like eighth, which was scoring. And Mark Wetmore, like he was yelling to Brent Vaughn at the front. He's like, Seth's in eight, Seth's in eight. Like I was in position as a walk-on to score at the Big 12 championships. It was amazing. And then Brent ended up in the hospital. I faded like there's no fit. It was so bad. We all faded bad. It was just an ugly, ugly episode. So that's my heat story. Like that was really the only moment where I really did, like we just, we messed up. We just underestimated. So anyway, thank you all for being here. Thanks for watching. Here's some more vlogs you can watch. You see them on your screen there. Uh, again, this is a daily vlog, so plenty to dig through in the archive if you're interested. And as always, I love you. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. We will see you tomorrow.